What's up guys, it's Mike here with PadBangers.com. Happy New Year to everybody. And I want to start a new year with a quick tutorial in Ableton Live for all you guys who uh, have access to the um, Max for Life tools in Ableton. Um, we can do and we're gonna build our own vocal writer today. Now, if you don't know what a vocal writer is, it's a plugin made by Waves. And what it does is it scans the waveform and it automates the volume fader of your track to uh, even out volume changes over the whole track without compressing the signal, which is a pretty good plugin. But you got the tools right here in Ableton to do this for free yourself. And I'm going to show you how you need to set it up. All we need to do this is a simple tool called the Envelope Follower, and uh, you will find it here in the Max for Life um, tools. And we just throw it on. I got an acapella from the Loop Masters Killer Acapella Volume 2 right here. And as you can see in the waveform, the chorus here is, uh, is louder than the verses, and there are some some volume changes over the track and I want to even those changes out without compressing the signal. So um, what I'm going to do here is first of all I need to make sure now the, the envelope follower is working and if you don't if you're not familiar with the envelope follower what it does it it scans the waveform as it comes in and it draws it in kind of like a curve and you can map it to any MIDI control in Ableton and this curve will control that function. I give you a quick example. I will I'll let let it play back here real quick. Your touch is like a ray of sunshine. I feel alright when you're all mine. Okay, and as you can see there's there's this little line drawing up now. Um we want to of course automate the the track volume, so I'm going to map this out. You just click on this, then it starts flashing. And you just click on the control, and as you can see, now it's mapped to the controller and it's set to zero. Now when I play back the vocal, watch what happened. So with the gain you can boost this line a little bit so you get bigger values here. And as you can see, as soon as the signal comes in and the line goes up, it also the, the volume fader goes goes up right here. Okay, now to control the volume, we just need to reverse this effect because we don't want the the fader to go up when the signal comes in. We want it the more signal comes in, the more we want it to, to lower the volume to make it more even. And uh, the more the, the signal falls, we want to raise the volume. So with these two values right here, minimum and maximum, we start off by reversing them. So I put in a minimum of 100 and a maximum of zero. And we play it back and now you can see what happens. Your touch is like a ray of sunshine. I feel alright when you're all mine. Okay, so now the direction of the fader is just right, but it still sounds terrible. So first of all, you notice it sounds really like cutting the volume because it goes very fast in the fader movement. So first of all, we use here rise and fall, which are nothing else than attack and release. We use this to make this a little more gentle. So um, I'm going to maybe point 2 here for the attack and point 1 for the release, or maybe 0.15. Now listen back. Your touch is like a ray of sunshine. I feel alright when you're all mine. This sounds much better. There's not this cutting effect anymore, but still the range, the fader jumps in the in the in the dB range is way too high. So we need to bring those values closer together, and. Um, Let's start off with a value of 50-50, which won't affect the signal at all. So if I play it back now, Your touch is like a ray you see there's no, there's no movement at all. They just stay the same. Now, I know I need to go up with the, with the minimum value and down with the maximum value to, to make the effect work. 
and I start off with a um, let's say maybe 70 for the minimum value and let's say 45 for the maximum value and uh, let's play it back Your touch is like a ray of sunshine I feel alright when you're all mine this looks, this looks pretty good now you see the fader is not jumping too much it's about maybe five decibel range and it really brings the vocals closer together now let's go back to session view and let's export this so I can show you how it looks compared to the old waveform so I go right here and export audio one call it test to my desktop And bring this file back in here. And now, as you can see, they're really, they're not perfectly in volume now, but they're way closer than before. Watch here the chorus parts compared to the, uh, the chorus parts compared to the verses. This is way way closer together than before and it sounds really good and you don't need to compress the sound or make it any thicker you're just adjusting the volume now compared to the commercial version of waves there are two little downsides here and uh, the first of all is you don't have a look ahead option I'm pretty sure waves does this so the the plugin scans the audio a little bit up front before it reacts now here this happens in real time so as soon as the signal comes in it affects the fader so it's a little slow but if you would do it manually by hand it's still more accurate than your your finger movement I don't say finger, uh, automation it by hand will be any worse or uh, don't get me wrong um, this makes gives it a, a human feeling but if you um, if you're lazy like me and you don't want to spend hours of adjusting faders and writing automation this could be a, a nice help and the second downside is you can write the envelope folder as an automation lane so as soon as I map it here to the to the volume fader um, automation is not accessible anymore which is not lucky at all and I think Ableton should add this feature in the future because it would be really cool if you just can record the automation through the whole track and then adjust it later by hand a little bit further so yeah but besides that it's a quick and neat way to bring volume closer together and um, to save a little bit of money if you don't need the automation and the accuracy of the commercial version all right that's it i hope you guys liked it um please if you do give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel share it with your friends and uh, shoot me some comments let me know what you guys think about this if you have any additional information i'm pretty new to ableton life and i'm learning every day so maybe there are better ways to do this i'm not sure if you know just shoot me a comment um i would appreciate it and if you have any wishes or questions shoot me questions or go to the Pat Bangers fan site and shoot me a message over there. All right, that's it so far. Mike with patbangers.com. See you guys next time. Peace out. Mm -hmm.